Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very well. In today's video I am of course doing another Tattoo Enthusiast Reacts to Tattoo TikTok. I could be doing this for years and years and years at this rate with the amount of tattoo TikToks I could react to because my favourites are chock -a full of stuff. Thanks to you as always, I'm super appreciative of the people that tag me in tattoo TikToks. Without you this series would not be possible, trust me. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much. But yes, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all sitting very, very comfortably. Okay, I should like to uh, make a comment about the fact that I am, yes, I'm actually wearing a cardigan in August. Do you know how happy that makes me? <laughs> it's finally a temperature where I can comfortably wear a cardigan and not sweat so much. Like I'm feeling quite warm. Um, but the aesthetic and the vibe of this Cardi was too much for me. I got it from Primark. I know, Primark. I think it was only like £10 or something. And I saw it and I was like, oh my little emo heart, I need to get that. <laughs> but it's so fluffy and soft and cosy and oh, it's a mood, it's a vibe. I really do feel like lighting up an autumnal candle right now. Should I do it? Should I light this one up? It's uh, Ghost Stories or what's this one? Oh, this is dark oud. Oh, see, that's not quite autumnal. Maybe I should do that one because, like, you know, like, do I really want to like something that's apple and cinnamony right now? Probably not. There we go. The candle is lit just there. It's not like completely autumnal, but it was like a Halloween one because it had like a spider on the lid kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, spooky. Very, very spooky. I beg your pardon. Um, but yes, anyway, have you got your beverages? Are you cozy? I know, it's not Pepsi Max. I know, this is delicious. I found it in B&M and now I can't stop drinking them. <laughs> okay, let's get started. I'm gonna put my earbud situation in this ear because I recently, I don't know if you can see it, probably not, um, but I recently got my uh, Dave pierced because I thought they were very, very pretty. And I don't know, I just love the way they look in people's ears. So I wanted one. And um, yeah, so I don't want to be putting earbuds or anything in this ear, but I am wearing one. It's in there. You just can't see it. Okay. Day one of me touching up a stick and poke tattoo with my gun. Are we on a fluffy carpet? What is that? Is that a blanket? Please stop. What are you doing? There's no need to go that quick. Go slow. Why are you going so quick? Unless it's sped up, but I don't think so. No, what are you doing? I mean, I have to give them uh, credit because there is, you know, gloves. Like my standards are very low when it comes to ham, ham? <laughs> when it comes to home tattooing now. But there's, I'm hoping this has been sped up because there's no need to be this fast. This is how patchiness um, happens. I mean, it's not terrible. There's a bit of improvement there, but it could be like the ray could be a lot more saturated there because I feel like they went a bit too quick. You know, like slow down. Where's the rush? What's the hurry? <laughs> but the whole, I don't know what it is about people tattooing themselves on fluffy blankets or towels or whatever. It just gives me the ick because there is probably so much grossness trapped in all those fibers. And you're just like tattooing yourself on them. I don't know, it just bothers me. <laughs> She's a 10 but always tats herself to make her a 100. Okay. Okay. What? They were proper like tattooing the boobage area. Excuse me? I mean, fair play, I guess. That takes something. And the neck as well. Jesus, I don't know if this is a professional tattoo artist or not. I'm looking on their profile, it says female tattoo artist, self-taught. But whether they tattoo in a studio or not, I don't know. There is quite a few tattooing videos, but it kind of looks like they just tattoo themselves. So, mm, a bit suspicious. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, don't think this is a tattoo artist that works in a studio kind of deal if you know what I'm saying. But I mean, I'll give them credit because, you know, it definitely takes some guts to tattoo yourself, especially like your neck area. Oh boy. 
So I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't do any upkeep on the white. You can do multiple passes if you want to make it brighter, but like... Whoa. That's one pass and it's fully healed. So like I had this done a week ago. That's completely healed and it's super vibrant. So yeah, and same as the red on black. You, I did one pass on this and it was still there, but I did another pass recently just to make it even brighter. But like to give you an example, this red on black is brighter than the red in my eye over here. And this was done like pre-blackout, this was done post-blackout. So like, just for reference, this red is brighter than the red I got done not over blackout. So yeah, the possibilities are pretty limitless and it's really just on people to try more stuff at that point. But yeah, I don't do any maintenance for the white. What you see is what you get. This white was done almost a year ago. Wow, that is absolutely fascinating. I'm glad I was tagged in that because I don't know if it depends how much of my videos you watch, but I have been very much thinking of blacking out the whole of my back and then having white ink over the top. It's going to be such a huge commitment that I'm still very much thinking about it. I'm not in any rush to do it because it's, again, something I really want to think about because yeah it's a lot so i'm glad i've been tagged in that and seen you know what it can look like you know that was obviously done very very well the design and the artwork is absolutely splendid it's so freaking good and it's just fascinating i'm a uk tattoo artist who loves goth vibes yes oh <gasps> yes oh beautiful love it this is a bit of me oh god I love tattoos like that. They are, a, you know, like I was saying, they're a bit of me. Very nice, very spooky. Love a bit of like black and gray, black work vibes as well. Mm. Stop what you're doing if you love Stranger Things. Well, I do. I very much do. What are we about to see? My boyfriend and I are tattoo artists in the UK. Here's what we do when we have a day off, okay? Oh, yes, love them. Okay, okay. Oh, stencil peel, love a stencil peel. Okay, so we're doing a Munson, Eddie Munson tattoo. Yes, love that. <laughs> spicy area, very spicy. That's freaking hella cool. Yes love that's freaking amazing amazing i love that so freaking much as a stranger things fan you know oh god the newer season how amazing was that and everyone loves eddie munson he's become like the most loved TV character ever, I believe. Like, how can you not love him? I mean, I'm always going to be... <laughs> I love Steve so much. I'm sorry, babysitter Steve will always be probably one of my favourite characters from Stranger Things. Or Hopper, obviously, because... Oh, daddy. <laughs> but yeah, Eddie Munson is, you know, he represents a lot of us, like, misfits, right? I feel like a lot of us can kind of relate to how he was treated. Man, I just really needed some ink therapy lately. I had a stressful week. I needed this. Yeah, I, I get that. Do you want me to sing to you? That would be lovely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Oh my god. It's <laughs> I was expecting some kind of nice little lullaby, not some devil demonic noises. <laughs> but I totally agree about the whole ink therapy thing. Like, it can make you feel better, can't it? A new tattoo it just lifts your spirits up. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, honestly. You know, like, whatever keeps you going, right? It's probably bad advice. I should maybe sit here and be like, well, you need to think about what's really making you unhappy and maybe seek therapy. Like, that could probably be the smarter idea, but... I can't say that because that's not what I would do. You know, that would make me a hypocrite if I said something like that. So, you do you, boo. <laughs> Let's make a horror tattoo, please. Let's do this. Sparkly, I'm here. <gasps> yes, sir. Uh, ghost face, let's go. Shut up. 
That is so freaking cute. I need to look at this again. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is so cute. So me. It's the best of both worlds for me. It's cute and scary. I love that so much. The colours as well. Gorgeous. Would you, Would get, you a get a random tattoo, tattoo for a thousand dollars? For a thousand dollars? No, yes, I'm all right. I'll do it for free. Thanks, buddy. I'm yeah. cool. Thanks, buddy. I'll give you a thousand dollars. Do you think your wife would let you spin Thank this you. tattoo wheel and get a random tattoo? Yes. No, not for a no. thousand. No. Damn. I'll right, do bro. it for free. I'll Let's give you go. Thousand dollars if you spin this random tattoo wheel and get a random tattoo. Uh, does it have to be covered or how big's it got to be? Bro, it can Maybe be like literally size. a couple inches. Yeah, Let's do it. Guy. I got the guy outside ready. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Permanent. Oh. L. Amazing. Wait, hang on. Wait, they're doing it in a ta- No. They're doing it in a supermarket. Are you kidding me? I was all for this. I thought, like, this was kind of a fun idea. But tattooing in a supermarket? Wherever they may be, I don't know, some warehouse studio, warehouse studio, what do you call those things? Like a DIY store, I don't freaking know. I was all for this, I was kind of hoping that they would go to a studio or something to complete this TikTok video situation. I would have been like, yeah, you know what, this is kind of harmless content, I'm all about it, but it, oh, hell to the no. No, 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 what, no. This might be a little bit worse. Mm, I don't know. Is this worse than being tattooed in an airplane? I don't know. <laughs> but I do not have good feelings about this at all. It was all going good until that moment in time. Please don't be getting tattooed anywhere but a tattoo studio, okay? Thank you. How'd it go? Whoa. This is beautiful. <gasps> That is probably one of the most prettiest neck tattoos I've ever seen. I love the placement, I love the design, I love everything about it, like the way it goes from that really dark greeny black colour to that light green. That is a gorgeous neck tattoo, holy cow. I'm impressed, I like that a lot. The stag beetle represents the triumph of good over evil. I got flames around both of my ankles um they do in fact make me go faster <laughs> you see how fast that was <laughs> some people call me hot wheels <laughs> oh god i love people that have energy like this so freaking much that was a great tiktok love <laughs> weird stuff people said to me while i'm tattooing them Oh lord. Okay, let's go. So when does the tattoo wash off and fade? <laughs> Do you have a relationship with your dad? No. Will your baby come out with tattoos on it? What the hell? I'm so turned on by this. Oh, gross. Oh, I bet tattoo artists really do get the most obscene questions sometimes. I'm sure some of them are very, very valid and, you know, genuine questions but questions like that you know oh dear full sleeve done in six hours i beg your pardon how but then if it is all line work it's probably very possible and then if the tattoo artist is a quick worker as well that's also beneficial okay so we've got a lot of stencils going on here Love a bit of stencil in. Oh, are we going to get a peel? Oh, yeah, peel it off. <laughs> that sounded so wrong. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it is majority just line work and all of that. So that makes sense for it to be done in six hours in a day. There is that whole meme of like, oh, can we get a sleeve done in a day? The majority of the time, you cannot get a sleeve done in a day. But then it does depend on the style. So if you want like a realism sleeve or a traditional sleeve, you no, that's not really gonna happen in a day but something like that that is just line work could be possible but hopefully people don't see this and think that all sleeves can be done in six hours or in a day you know just like 
Calm down now. <laughs> what does your face tattoo mean? Okay, it's a horseshoe. I'm carrying your love with me. No. I mean, that's a, that. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because that probably hurt so freaking much. I can't even imagine the pain of being kicked by a horse. Okay. But I'm, I'm all for them um, celebrating it remembering it i don't know i don't, I don't know <laughs> i mean that's that's one hell of a meaningful tattoo <laughs> letting my 13 year old niece give me a tattoo what i mean it doesn't look bad i mean it's a bit patchy and what have you but it's not terrible and like the environment and the setup looks very, very clean. Whether this is in a tattoo studio or not, I'm not sure. I don't know, like in the UK, that would not fly at all. Because if this was done in a tattoo studio where the minimum age of getting tattooed is 18, you, you would lose your license. I'm sure of it. Like letting someone that's underage tattoo, like it just, oh, I don't know. It seems kind of dangerous because what if something goes wrong because when you learn to tattoo like through an apprenticeship and what have you you learn the way the blood works and you know bloodborne pathogens and all of that you know like infections and how to be safe while tattooing and protect yourself not only the client but as a tattoo artist you got to protect yourself because you never know what someone may have you don't want to be you know too careless about tattooing someone and touching someone's bodily fluids and all of that stuff right you have to be extremely careful. So it's a bit like, yeah, it looks like it's been done safely, but does this 13 year old know everything there is to know when it comes to tattooing and being safe as a tattoo artist, you know? Okay, for this one, I have definitely seen, I wanna be completely transparent. I have seen this before, um, but I got tagged in it a lot. So I, I wanna share it with you because it's like some wholesome content. Um, but this person puts on a bunch of temporary tattoos on their head. It's so freaking cool. And they did such a good job with all the placements and what have you. Like, I love that. That looks so freaking cool. My rib tattoo is going to hurt, but I think I'll be fine. I don't need numbing cream. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> tattoo eyes is like what the fuck <laughs> oh gosh for, i do have my ribs tattooed but for me they weren't too bad it was more of like a an annoying sensation i think the worst thing for me personally it was the feeling of not being able to breathe like i felt like every time i breathed i was annoying the tattoo eyes which obviously wasn't the case the tattoo eyes knew exactly what they were getting into doing a rib tattoo of course but yeah for me rib tattoos weren't super painful i mean looking back on it now compared to some of the most painful tattoos i've ever had which was you know like the back of my hands my fingers my neck my palm which was absolute hell ribs to me were honestly not that bad but of course everyone's different everyone's pain tolerance is different like something that's painful for me may not be painful for someone else and something that is painful for someone else might not be painful for me it's just the way we work and it's what makes us human
Okay, well, that was quite informational and a little bit scary, I won't lie, because I am someone that has tattoos all here, in there, in here, um, and what have you. And I also have witnessed firsthand what it's like. Well, I haven't gone through cancer, but my mum had. She had breast cancer and all of that. So cancer's a scary word to the... I think everyone, right? You hear the word cancer and you instantly freak out. Um, it's a catch-22 situation because obviously nobody wants cancer. Everyone wants to detect cancer as soon as possible should they have it. But another part of me is like, do you really want to put off living your life and doing what you want in fear of cancer? Do you want it to rule your life? You know, it's always a catch-22 and um, I don't have any regrets with, you know, getting my tattoos. It is, you have to be kind of careful when you get tattooed, especially if you're quite a freckly person or you have quite a few moles, you have to be careful where you get tattooed over because if you get a dark tattoo over a mole and you can't see the changes of it, should this mole, freckle, whatever change, that can be kind of dangerous as well. Um, but again, like, do you... I think it's a case by case situation. Do you want to not get a tattoo in fear of something and, you know, not live a life where you have a tattoo you really want just in case? Or are you just like YOLO? You know, like at the end of the day, this might sound a bit heartless and all of that, but we're all going to die, all right? <laughs> Whether, you know, it's by an illness or by getting hit by a bus tomorrow. If we all are so cautious about how we live our lives, we're not going to do anything. We're never going to have fun. You know, it's a hazard eating, right? You might choke and die. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's definitely something to think about. So since I'm quite heavily tattooed, I developed a superpower. I realised people are still intimidated by tattoos. So what <laughs> I started true. doing was, if I was on a train and I didn't want people to sit next to me, I would just look really angry and pull up my sleeves, right? So I look like this. <laughs> I did it today and someone sat next to me and I was like really confused. I was like, what the fuck? My superpower's not working. And I just realised why. Amazing. Amazing. Oh my goodness. But yeah, people are still intimidated or scared of heavily tattooed people. There is this, oh my goodness, this is quite an old situation, but there was this sort of viral video that went around on Facebook for a while of... Um, like people that were very, very heavily tattooed, just asking for help, just being like, oh, can I have some um, money? Can I borrow your phone? It's like an emergency situation or what have you. And then I think they covered those exact same people. And obviously people were like, no, go away, leave me alone. Because they were, people were scared of these tattooed people that were obviously, you know, being nice about things. And then I think... If I remember, they covered the tattoos up on the exact same people and the response for them people that, you know, didn't look tattooed anymore was completely different. People were willing to help, being like, yeah, of course, here you go. People do get scared of tattooed people and I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I know there's a long history of the majority of like criminals and bad people having tattoos and all of that, but times have changed such a lot. You know, like everyone has tattoos now. I've seen pastors or that sounds like I'm saying pastor, but like pastors, you know, like religious um, revenants and all of that. Yeah, I've seen those with tattoos, nurses, doctors, lawyers, you know, tattoos are a lot more mainstream now, but there's still people out there that are a bit like, oh, tattooed person, they're going to mug me. And it's like, sweetheart, darling, no, I'm not going to mug you. I don't have the guts for that. I also don't have the energy to be doing that right now. You know, look, I would never. Oh, anyway. I'm gonna show you crybabies how to be a tough guy artist. <laughs> gonna draw a tough little ladybug guy. What you gonna do about the ladybug? Oh, Why is this adorable? Ladybug guy. What you gonna do? Oh my gosh, I love this content. Yeah, ladybug. He sat on the floor and he's waiting for you. Bro. Gonna fuck you up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. Ladybug guy is a little rough and tough ladybug, yeah. Little ladybug, little rough and tough guy is gonna fuck you up. <laughs> this is so freaking yeah, cute, though. Fight me, shit, cunt. I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> fight me, cunt. Oh, I'm a ladybug and I'm rough. <laughs> I love that piece of artwork so freaking much. This is the kind of wholesome, great content that I love. Okay, it's so great. But it goes to show that you are never too tough or tough looking or scary looking to enjoy some cuteness. Okay, because let's face it, that was freaking adorable. <laughs> Just because I'm a Sagittarius, but I'm really upset uh, about the way the wor world works because, okay, so the other day I'm getting these tattoos done, right? The ones on my collarbones. Nice. Hurt really bad, okay? He gets halfway through one. He finishes one, okay? And I'm like, hey, I'm kind of thirsty. Can Do you guys have water here? Can I have some water? And he goes, well, do you feel faint? No. No, I asked for water. If I felt faint, I would have said, hey, man, I feel a little faint. Let's take a break. But then I tell my mom the story, and she says, well, sometimes people say that they, they are thirsty when they're really feeling faint during mm -hmm. the tattoo, and so he has to double check. And I say, that's stupid. Why would you say one thing if you feel another? I don't understand. All right, other day, I went to go get my AirPods fixed. My left AirPod stopped working, okay? I go to the, I go to the Apple store. I say, hello, sir. The left AirPod stopped working. And he says, are they clean? And I say, of course they're clean. I'm going to hand them to you. And it would be really embarrassing if there was a bunch of earwax on here. I don't say that. I say, yes, of course they're clean. Okay. He takes them. He opens them. Oh, wow. They're actually clean. Well, that's what I just said. I just said they were clean. Why would you lie about that? Who goes into the Air Apple store and is like, hey, yeah, my AirPods are clean. And he pulls them out and they're covered in ear gunk. Why would you, that, why would you embarrass yourself like that? Anyways, he opens it. He says, oh, they actually are clean. And then he says, let me run a quick little diagnostics. He runs his diagnostics. He says, left AirPod isn't working. That's funny. I said that as soon as I walked in. But uh, this happens in my day-to-day -day life too, okay? People will come up to me and be like, hey, I just want to make sure you're not upset with me. If I was upset with you, I would say I'm upset with you. Why would I not say that? I don't understand. I'm sorry, but I relate to this person's energy so much because Tom, my boyfriend, is a Sagittarius. They seem to be all the same. So freaking chaotic, right? With their energy and the way they explain things. Like, Sagittariuses, are you not tired? Please breathe, okay? <laughs> what is with the chaos? Okay, like we're not in a rush. We're here to listen. Okay, I'm not like you can you can be slow. You can calm down. <laughs> honestly, living with a Sagittarius sometimes it's it. Oh my god! Like honestly, Tom is a true Sagittarius when it comes to the chaos. I'm like, please, can we just take one thing at a time? One, th just one thing at a time, sweetheart. All right. Why are we in a rush? Why are you in a hurry? Why are you trying to do seven things at once? If you're a Sagittarius, it's gonna be okay. Please. Listen to me, from a Capricorn, okay? It's gonna be all right. Why is, it, why is life so chaotic for you? What happened? <laughs> what did the moon do to you? <laughs> oh, but yeah, the whole first story there, after all of that, um, if I can remember, because it was so chaotic, um, the whole asking a tattoo artist for water because you're thirsty is completely okay. You know, it's... I always bring a drink with me to a tattoo session, no matter if it's like 30 minutes or 300 hours, okay? I always bring a drink with me. But if you forget or, you know, you're very busy before your tattoo appointment and you don't have time, you can ask for uh, some water. It should be fine. A tattoo artist should not find any issue with that. I completely understand why the tattoo artist said, oh, you, do you feel faint kind of thing? Because... Like this Sagittarius's mother said, you know, sometimes when someone isn't feeling well, they will ask for water. So it's just a cautionary thing why the um, tattoo artist asked kind of thing. They're just, you know, making sure that you're okay. Um, but I need a lay down after that. Oh my goodness. Wondering what a stomach tattoo would look like on a plus size person. Yes! I need to see this again. That tattoo is freaking amazing. The vibes are immaculate. The style is immaculate. Holy cow. Yes. Oh my God, I love it so, so much. And this kind, these kind of TikToks just give me so many good positive vibes because I get, I get questions and like comments all the time saying, oh, I want this tattoo, but you know, I'm a curvy person. I'm a plus size person. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it looks good. I don't think I should have... Stop that right now. Stop.
stop that, please. I, I cannot stress enough. You are never too big or too small for any kind of tattoo. It will work. Just because you are a certain size doesn't mean you should not experience something, not have something, think something doesn't look good on you. Bullshit. This person right here, living proof. That tattoo is beautiful. It is gorgeous. I love it so much. And, ah. Oh. I just love to see it. Live your best life, please, I beg. If there's anything you can learn from me and my videos is just please live your life, get that tattoo. You are not too of anything to have a tattoo ever. Okay, I'm gonna react to one more for this video. If you've Let's ever been tattooed by me, tattooing. you've heard something along okay. the lines of, consent is important to me in my practice. Anytime I have to touch you or lean on you, I'll ask if that's okay. Is it cool if I shave you down? And I ask that it's not because anyone's ever said, actually, I'd rather you not shave me. But because to me, consent is the centerpiece of any good tattoo practice. And starting from a place of consent lets you kind of constantly check in about that. So anytime I have to move your shirt, I'm going to ask. Amazing. Anytime I have to lean on you or stretch really hard, I'm going to ask. And anytime something changes about the process, where my hands are, any of that stuff, I'm going to ask. And any tattooer worth your time should be doing this. Because we're changing your bodies forever and you're in charge. A hundred percent. I love, love their attitude towards tattooing. That to me is a breath of fresh air and I would appreciate a tattoo artist doing that. The thing is, I've been getting tattooed for a very long time now. I've never had a tattoo artist be like, oh hi, can I do this, this, this and this? Because whenever I get tattooed, I expect it. I expect a tattoo artist to be all up in my grill, touching all over, stretching my skin and all of that. It's just something that I've always thought, you know, I've signed up for this. I've been very, very lucky, touch wood and all of that. Um, I've never had any unpleasant experiences. I've never been inappropriately touched while getting tattooed or anything like that, but it does happen. It's quite rare, but it does happen. And the major red flags you need to look out for is, you know, someone asking you to take off way more clothes than you need to. You know, if you're getting your arm tattooed, like lower arm tattooed, and the tattoo artist is like, oh, can you take your t-shirt off? Why? You're tattooing down here, my love. Why do I need to take my t-shirt off? There's plenty of area there that's got no clothes on it. What, what are you doing? Why are you asking me to be sitting in a bra right now or topless right now? You know, you've got to look out for the red flags of stuff that just doesn't make sense. And if a tattoo artist has been way more handsy than they need to be, red flag. If they're touching other parts of your body that isn't getting tattooed, red flag. You know, it's all about just, just be careful. The thing is, we re I shouldn't have to be giving out these warnings. Other people should have to be giving out these warnings. But there are people out there that take advantage of their clients and they abuse their power of being like the authority in that environment. You know, they're the tattoo artist, you're going to them to get tattooed. You're giving them the right to touch you and all of that jazz. But some really do take the uh, piss about it. So I love that whole asking for consent thing. It's very, very sweet. It, I'm sure it's very much appreciated. I think if I was in that environment um, with this tattoo artist, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. You know what? You can do whatever you want. I consent to absolutely anything. If you do anything that makes me uncomfortable, I will let you know. Um, but because I would probably be a bit like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'd be like, you know what, mate? Just just go for it. You know, like you don't have to keep asking. But I know for a lot of people that kind of language and that kind of communication, it, oh, just amazing. Because there's a lot of people that that get tattooed that have been through horrific cases of assault or sexual assault or abuse or you know just being at the hands of very awful people so that kind of communication it's it's priceless it costs nothing and I'm sure it helps people so much so props to you honestly just I love it and I appreciate it and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that also love and appreciate that so it's good to see that'll be it for today's video as always thank you so much for being here and yeah until my next video I hope you all stay safe and well but until then bye